Our videos feature voices and visuals created using AI technology, intended for adult entertainment. These depictions should not be mistaken for real celebrities. There is no endorsement, affiliation, or association with the personalities portrayed. These should be seen as nothing more than poor imitations. Viewer discretion is advised when watching this content. Titty sprinkles. Good evening, gentlemen. I trust you all had a relaxing break from the previous chapter and are eager to begin chapter two. It's been far too long since the last session. I can't wait to get stuck into the next part of the adventure. After the terrible way that one shot went, I'll be glad to be back to my mighty swollenness again. I'm so excited that we're finally leveling up. I want to change up some of my spells. Oh man, I totally forgot we leveled up. I could go barbarian and learn some rage. We agreed, Biden. No one was multi-classing until at least level three. Stick with fighter and stop trying to be me. You can't duplicate perfection no matter how hard you try it. Come on, man. As you've rightly pointed out, gentlemen, you have indeed all leveled up to two. So before we continue with the adventure, we will take a moment to update your character sheets. If you could start us off, Joe. Remember, you need to let me know if you will roll for HP or take the average. I'm gonna roll for it, and I use a D10 for this. I got seven. Nice, that's just above average. Shame his IQ is below average. Fuck you, Donald. At level two, I gain action surge, which allows me to take an extra action. That'll come in handy if we're faced off against multiple enemies. That's all the additional stuff for me. You can go next, Ben. Excellent. I will not risk getting a low roll, so I'll take the average of five for my HP. At second level, I gain two channel divinities, thanks to my order domain one being Turn Undead and the other being Order's Demand, allowing me to charm any creature within 30 feet of me. I can also add three new spells to my list. They will be Bane, Sanctuary, and Inflict Wounds. I'm also swapping Healing Word for Cure Wounds. Why the swap out? I found Cure Wounds to be a bit crap. I had to be up close to anyone in order to use it, whereas Healing Word works up to 60 feet away, as well as being used as a bonus action. Much better for us all. Does this mean you'll actually heal us this time? That's me done for my level up, Dungeon Master. Barack, you're up next. I will take the risk for the roll on this one. Ha, it's the same as the average, so that'll be four for me. I can take two new spells, which will be Hideous Laughter and Expeditious Retreat. One to cause the creature to possibly become prone, the other to give me a chance to run if needed. We all know how you like to run like a little bitch. Get over it, Donald. As I have taken Chronergy Magic, I also gain a reaction called Chronal Shift allowing me to force a creature to re-roll for attack, ability, or saving throw. And I have temporal awareness adding my intelligence modifier to my initiative rolls. Some excellent choices there. And so we finish with Donald. Saving the best until last. I get it. I'm gonna roll for this and you can all weep at my amazing motherfucker. What did you get? Mm, three. What was that? You need to speak up, Donald. We haven't heard what amazing number you rolled. I got a damn three fucking rig dice. Seems fair to me. Of course you would say that. You're probably the one who rigged them. But I know what happens when I ask to redo something, so I'll let it slide. At level two, I gain reckless attack. Giving me advantage on my attacks has a slight downside, being that it also allows others to have advantage against me, but they'll be dead before that becomes a problem. I also get danger sense, giving me advantage on dexterity saving throws, against effects I see. Now, given how I'm a perfect and godly like man, that's all I would need at this time. And with that done, I believe we are ready to continue, unless you would like a recap of chapter one first. I think a reminder of what's been happening would be good to keep the adventure fresh in our heads. I could do it this time, Dungeon Master. I have carefully noted every detail of chapter one, and I- Would put us all to sleep with your boring dribble? No, the honor of recapping goes to me, the master of storytelling but you leave out crucial information, plus you get so much wrong. No one will know what you're talking about. 
They'll know. And if I leave anything out, it's because it wasn't worth talking about. Now shut up and let Daddy do his thing. Very well, Donald. Please remind us all of the events of last chapter. Check it. In a cart with three assholes, an old man, an elf waifu, and a midget killjoy. Got to some shit heap town on fire. Awesome hot chicken trouble. Load of kobolds surrounding her. I kicked their asses, Gurmly died, walked through a forest. Some hooded guys talked while we waited in the dark like some perverts. We crossed a river, Gurmly died. Got to the keep and attacked by more kobolds, Gurmly died. Hot chick died. I went super Saiyan with rage. Met a dwarf, met an old man, met a gnome, met a big bird. We talked a lot, like a whole video's worth. Dragon showed up, kicked its ass, Gormley died. We went underground and found some more hooded guys at the end. Took their clothes, went to a mill, fought more kobolds. Gormley died, dragon came back, half dragon showed up, had a fight one-on-one. -on -one. I let him win, went back to keep, and Gormley got some pussy and died. Wow, sounds like you boys had quite the adventure. What the fuck is he doing here? That's rude. I'm sitting right here in front of you, Donald. You could ask me. Okay, what the fuck are you doing here? I'm joining you guys in some good old Dungeons and Dragons. Your DM said it was okay. I thought he was joking. Are we seriously allowing this guy, this guy, to be part of our awesome adventure? Whatever is going on outside of this tavern is of no concern to me, and shouldn't be to you either. While we are in here, we are simply a group of men playing a game. I'm not gonna cause any trouble, just give me a chance. Give him a chance, man. It could be fun to have another party member. I'm not even surprised that you would be eager to have him here, but what about you two? You're both okay with him being here? I'm not getting into who should be allowed here and who shouldn't. That's a topic not worth discussing. Yeah, I just wanna play D&D. &D. So can we get back to it? Unfucking believable Fine, I'm nothing if not a believer in democracy. I can see I'm outvoted on this. I'll hold my tongue for now. Very good. Now let us begin. What? Wait, doesn't Bill need his character sheet? In due time. For now, Bill will merely be a spectator. Yeah, I'll be joining you when... Uh... Bill, please do not mention what we discussed for now. Your moment will come. The four of you have been escorted to the keep for some well-earned sleep, having spent the entire night dealing with the invasion of Greenest. You are each given a room and have yourselves a long rest. This is where you would have leveled up. By the time you wake, the sun is high in the air, you can hear the distant sounds of tools being used as the people have already begun rebuilding their town. Bama, after having a long rest, you awake to find your feathers have fallen off you and lie around your body. I put my hand to my face and feel around. You notice that your face feels like it did before you took your second potion. Your skin is as it was, your beard is back in place, and the hand you used is as it should be. The effects of the potion have faded. As I have slept during the day after the fifth night, I take it that means I didn't have the dream? That's correct. You have slept peacefully and are well rested, as have the rest of you. What dream is this? That's something I have touched upon before in character, but not in great detail. Don't worry about it. You each get out of bed and head into the courtyard. The sun is bright, but there is a cold chill in the air. You see many people hurrying about their business as they attempt to fix what they can. Treat the injured, or in some cases, carry bodies wrapped in sheets. Governor Nighthill stands with Escobert the Red at one end of the courtyard. They see you emerge and beckon you over. Good afternoon. We were just discussing whether we should come and wake you, but I see that doesn't matter now. He smiles at you all. Thank you for your efforts last night. You have successfully prevented the mill from being destroyed, as agreed, your reward. He hands each of you a sack of coins. Inside is 100 gold. I tip my hat to him and pocket the gold. I take my bag, pause for a moment, then hand it back to him. Would you give this to Terry Winkle for me? I owe him for the potions I bought. Ah, I see. Could you not give it to him yourself? He is in his room, still fixing the mess that was made in there. I have more pressing matters to attend to. Would I still have Sir Fluffs a lot with me? It's up to you. What did you do with him when you returned to the keep? Probably something dark and unnatural. I took him to my room and let him sleep as well. I'll say I have him under my arm. I take my bag and reach a hand out for Gormley's. I'll take it to him. I'm going to see Terry Winkle anyway. Very well. He hands you Gormley's bag. And here's yours, Swolnald. He hands out a final bag. I take the bag and attach it to my belt, then look at Escobar. We still have that deal? He looks around as if searching for something. If you kept your end of it, laddie, but I'm not seeing any cult members. Oh, shit. 
You left him tied up at the end of the tunnel, didn't you? Oh, fuck. I have nothing else to do here, so I could go with you to get him. You can if you want, but you won't be able to keep up with me. Right, because you're the mighty Swolnald. Well, yeah, of course, but I meant you have tiny legs. But don't worry, I've got you. And I grab Bama, holding his puny whoa, body whoa, whoa. under one arm, like Gurmley and the cat, and begin sprinting along the courtyard and head for the entrance of the keep, shouting back to the others, we'll be back soon. Don't carry me. I try to break free of his grasp. I'll need a strength check from each of you. Unfortunately, Bama is simply no match for Swole's strength and dangles on the end of his arm as Swole makes gigantic strides along the courtyard, out the gate, and into the town. This is bullshit. Towards the tunnel entrance where the cultist was left. We have other matters to attend to. Let us talk some more later. Yes, indeed, good sir. And I bow my head a little and begin walking towards Terry Winkle's potion room. I shake both their hands and walk onto the blacksmiths. What's a Terry Winkle? Is it a sex thing? What? No, it's the name for a gnome that runs a potion store that I kind of accidentally blew up. What would a Terry Winkle even be? I'm not sure, but give me some time and I'll think of something. You could spend your time a little more constructively, Bill. When I'm actually in game, sure, until then. I'm coming up with what kind of sex act a Terry Winkle would be. Whatever, I take it I've reached the potion shop by now? Indeed you have. The door is slightly open as it hangs off its remaining hinges. Inside, you see that the room is full of broken glass bottles. The books that once lined the walls have, for the most part, remained in place. Although many lie shredded on the floor, Strange clouded substances seem to waft across the floor. Terry Winkle is sweeping up glass as you enter. Ah, my criminal accomplice has returned to the scene of the crime. Welcome, my boy. He smiles at you and leans on his broom. To what do I owe this visit? I have nothing left to be destroyed, as you can see, except this broom. Hello, Mr. Winkle. I've come to give you the gold that was owed from Mr. Whitebeard, the one you gave two potion of healings to. I hold out Gurmless's bag. I was also wondering if you had anything left in your potion supplies that I may be able to purchase. Don't hear too well, do you? Might have been from the explosion. Sorry, my boy, but I'm fresh out of potions, unless you're looking for foot rot ointment. Seems to be the only thing that remained. Sadly, though, it is outdated, so wouldn't be of much use. He reaches out and takes the bag. Thank you kindly for bringing this to me. Now be off with you. You don't want to be around these fumes for very long. They'll stunt your growth and make your nose hairs elongate. And he continues sweeping. I guess I'll leave then. I was kind of hoping for some of those elixir of time potions. Oh, well, I will return to the courtyard and wait for Gurmley to finish up. They're not as good as you might think, dude. You can have my last one if you want it. What kind of potions are you fellas talking about? They're experimental elixirs that I used in the last chapter. The results can vary. Yeah, last time he was a chicken. A duck, Joe. He was a duck. And before that, he could only speak in rhymes. They were pretty bad. As you walk back into the courtyard, I'd like you to make a perception check. You see out of the corner of your eye a creature with green scaly skin standing on the other side of the gate that leads into the tunnels. It senses you looking at it and disappears into the darkness. It's one of them dragon lizard things we fought. Kappas. Kobolds. But I don't think it was. They had red scales, this thing had green. But whatever it was, it's in the tunnels that lead to where the other two went. I'm going to run towards Gurmley. Very well. But we will go back a little to when Gurmley went to the blacksmith. While holding the cat, you walk towards the Arakakra you met the previous night. He is busy, banging away at his latest piece of art. The cat meows loudly and he stops mid-strike, looks up and sees the cat. Dropping his hammer, runs forwards and takes the cat from you. Sir fluffs -a -lot, my precious baby. I was so worried about you. You had daddy all scared. Look at your fur, all dusty and scatty. We've got to get you straight into a bath. Without another word, he turns on the spot and walks away. Hey, I thought we had a deal. What about my sword? Without looking back, he calls out. It's hanging on the wall. Take it and thanks. You can see Night Striker gleaming from the sunlight. As you place your fingers on it, you hear the sound of a crow cawing. I grip tightly onto the sword and feel the weight of it, testing its balance. You notice that this sword feels far too heavy to be wielded single-handedly. You also feel a magical radiance of energy upon it. This will require attunement from yourself before being able to use it. 
But while you are admiring the craftsmanship, you hear the sound of running footsteps and see Sharpen heading towards you. Gurmley, there's something in the tunnels and it may be more kobolds or worse. The others will be on the end of one of the tunnels and they could get ambushed. I sheath my new sword and draw on my long sword instead. Then let's go. We head through the tunnel at this end and see if we can catch up to it. While the pair of you head for the tunnel entrance at this end, we're going to go to Swole and Bama. About damn time, I was starting to feel like Joe. Quiet and reserved? Sleepy and useless. Have we reached the tunnel entrance yet? Yes, your massive strides helped cover the distance in a very short space of time. You stand before the container with the crates that originally hid the entrance. Bitching. I put down the sack of potatoes that is the gnome and draw my great axe. I wipe down my cloak and adjust my hat, giving Swole a scowl as I do. There really wasn't any need for that stomp. I could have kept up with you. I believe that you think that, but I don't have time to test it. This guy could have broken out by now, and so we had to make like the wind. I look inside the tunnel. Can I see him? There is no sign of the cultist. However, you do see the rope you used lying on the ground. No! I roar in anger and smash the nearest crate with my axe. What's the big deal? So he got away, so what? It's not something to get so upset about. I needed him. I could have got an audience with the town's priest. Then I could have tried to find a way to bring Lil... You know what? Forget it. I'm done with this bullshit. Let's just get back to the others. Both of you, roll me a perception check. Well, this blows huge donkey balls. Wait, I use chronal shift as a reaction. Roll again. Your second roll was good enough. You notice there are footprints leading into the tunnel. Two sets, one of a human's and one of something else. Kobolds! I raise my hands and flames begin to erupt and circle them. Looks like not all of them made it out of the town. If we can find them, maybe we can find out where they went next. And I can get the answers I want too. Let's go! The pair of you begin making your way into the tunnel. The darkness swallows you both, but thanks to Bama's light of his flaming fists and his own dark vision, you're both able to see and follow the footsteps. Stomp, I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work. She's been gone for too long now. If the town had the kind of clerics that could do what you're thinking, they would have done so. I say nothing for a moment. Maybe you're right about the clerics, but priests know things. They could lead me in the right direction to obtain the knowledge to prevent this sort of thing in the future. If any of us were to be able to learn to do what you're thinking, it would be sharpened. Unless you're a warlock, of course. A what? A warlock. Seekers of the knowledge that lies hidden in the fabric of the multiverse. Through packs made with mysterious beings of supernatural power, they can unlock magical effects both subtle and spectacular, including raising the dead. But it can come at a really high risk depending on the type of patron. The tunnel opens up to a larger area, and ahead of you, there are two figures, one of which is the cultist, the other. A medium-sized creature with green, scaly skin, a large shell on its back, draped in cloth and wielding a quarterstaff. Its eyes seem sharp and focused on the pair of you. It raises the quarterstaff and sprints straight at you. Roll for initiative. 